subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Once you hear the sound, then you know that it's time for Joy Learning on the junior high school hour and it is time for mathematics once you see this face my name is samuel okwabi you can call me samox i will be your facilitator for today i want to urge you to call your colleagues in basic seven and tell them that the channel is on and it's time to go through another period of learning for one of the topics in basic seven and i'm glad to take you through that topic as we go through that lesson today. It is by the title, Number of Operations, Number Operations. And we want to look at operations on whole numbers as well as operations on decimal numbers. So we are looking at operations on whole numbers and then operations on decimal numbers. And it promises to be an exciting episode. I want you to take your jaw test and get ready for a lesson as we go through the lesson. So when we speak of mathematical operations, the last time I came your way, we looked at some of them by way of mental strategies. Okay, so in maths, we discovered that there are four basic operations that we use can you identify them? Can you recollect those basic operations that we dealt with the last time? Yes, addition is one. Subtraction is the second. Then we have multiplication. And then we also have division. So basically, these are the four most common operations that we use in mathematics. And we use them in almost every mathematical activity that we do. And so, for today, we're going to look at how we apply these operations on whole numbers as well as on decimal numbers. So, what are we seeking to achieve? By way of objectives, we want to ensure that by the time this section elapses, you will be able to demonstrate understanding of the operations of whole numbers, how to conduct mathematical operations on whole numbers, okay? And then we'll also demonstrate understanding on operations of decimal numbers. So whilst we do it for whole numbers, we are also going to be doing it for decimal numbers. We add, we subtract, we multiply, we divide, whole numbers, and then decimal numbers. So we're going to go through various activities, various methods of how to go about these things. And then we will use our understanding in solving real life situations, okay? real life problems that comes with whether we have to add or subtract or multiply or divide an item by another okay so these are the three main objectives that we seek to achieve and so for us to go through this section let us go through this vocabulary this language for our understanding okay so first of all we'll look at what we mean by partitioning or the expanded form i can ask you to perform addition operation using partitioning Okay, so by partitioning, you want to ask that you divide the numbers into bits. And so usually we divide them into their place values, like those in tens, in hundreds, and then maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands. Okay, we put them in their various place value systems. Okay, when we do that, it means we are partitioning the number. And it makes it easier for us to do whether addition or subtraction. So that is it for partitioning. And then the second one is the place value. 
okay, our commonly known place value, that we know that the value of a digit or a numeral in any given number depends upon the position or the place it is found within the number. Okay, so that's a place value. So if it is found in the tens place or the, the tens position, it means that it has a value of 10. And so the number there, assuming it was 5, it means that it's 5 tens. That gives us 50. Okay, so the value of a number or the value of a digit in the number is determined by the position in which it is in a number. So that is what we call the place value system. And we are going to be using that also, that method to also do some of the operations. Then we'll look at the lattice method. Another interesting method of, you know, multiplying numbers, whether whole numbers or decimal numbers, we are going to look at that, that, that system, okay, where we are going to be drawing lattices and use that process in multiplying numbers. It is an exciting thing. You will enjoy it. And then the concept of carrying or remainder, okay, so when we are doing, let's say, multiplication or even addition or even subtraction, we sometimes carry a number from one position to the next position, okay? Or sometimes we write a remainder down because the value of the number exceeds the base in which we are working. We write a remainder and carry the tens, so to speak, to the next position in our additions, okay? Or it can even be in subtractions, okay? Or even multiplications. And then we have the long division method. Okay, so we are going to be doing divisions as well. We are going to go through the process of long divisions. All right, so these are the things. So let's take this teaser. All right, and you are going to be working this out for me in five seconds maximum. Okay, it's just a teaser. Okay, so we want to evaluate each of the following. And the first one is 36 plus 82. 36 plus 82. I want to see what you will have for that in just five seconds. Okay, so let's see your responses. 36 plus 82. Let's see what we will get. And so that gives us 118. I want to believe that you got that. Okay, let me give you the chance of looking at the next question again. We have 72 minus 30. That's also for five seconds. You can work that out for me. And that should be okay. Now let's move to the third, which is 48 by 4. 48 times 4. Can you get that for me in five seconds? Right? Put it down on in your jotter somewhere. And then 69 divided by 3. In five seconds, can you get it done? All right, great. So let's look at the responses that you had. We have gone through the first one, and we saw that the sum should give us 118, 118. Okay, and then what about the subtraction should give us 42. Okay, we did this like a mental activity in split seconds, five seconds maximum, okay. And then the one with a subtract uh, multiplication, I beg your pardon, 48 times 4, that gave 192, 192, did you get that? Congratulations. And then the last one on division, that gave us 23. I want to believe that you got them. So congratulations if you got all of them right. If you did not, don't worry at all. We are going to be going through some processes, okay? On these operations and then we'll get to know how to deal with these things when we see them in any of our lessons okay so immediately we want to enter into the main lesson and want to start by adding whole numbers and want to be added them in various methods okay I'll take you through various methods I do one example I give you the chance to also practice that one for me so we have two of them. We are going to be adding each of them. Okay, so I'm going to take the first one. I'll use the 
I'll use two minutes in solving it. And then from there, I give you the chance to also do the second addition for me using any of the methods, okay, you so desire. So let's move on so that I take you through the first one. And I'm going to add 746 to 225. And I'm going to use that, do that using the partitioning method, okay, the partitioning method. So let's see how I'm going to partition these ones so that I can add them. So I have 700 and 746. Okay. And I'm going to add it to 225. So let me partition the 746. I'll partition it into 700 plus 40 and then plus a 6. Okay. So it means that the 6 is in the units column. The 4 is in the tens column, so that gives us a 40, okay? And then the 7 is in the 100th position, so that gives us 700, okay? So 746 ideally should be giving me 700 on one side, plus a 40 on another side, plus a 6 on another side. So what I'm doing is that I have partitioned the number into each place value numbers or place value figures okay the same way i can do 225 by partitioning it into a 200 plus a 20 plus a 5 okay so when i do it this way it means that i have written them the way they are supposed to come by way of their positions Okay, and the value that we get by virtue of the position in which they are found. Okay. So having done this, I can you know quickly go ahead and then do the adding for these ones. And so for the ones, I know that I'm going to be having 11 ones. I mean 6 plus 5 will give me 11. I'll write all of that for now. Okay, I'm using a partitioning method. So I'll write all of the 11 for now okay if i was using a place value system i will write just the remainder and carry one value of n to the next place okay but i'm using the partitioning method for now okay so it means that as far as the ones are concerned i'm going to be having six ones plus five ones that should be giving me 11 ones all right okay then i also have 40 plus 20 or to say four tens and two tens should also be giving me 60. Okay, then I should also be having 700 plus 200. That should be giving me 900. Okay, now that I have written this, it means that I can put all together. And when I put all together, it means that I should be having a 900 okay, plus a 60 and plus 11 and i can add this this way okay here gives me a one here gives me a seven and here gives me a nine okay so interesting or oh, i could have even added it here 900 plus 60 will give me 960 and then 960 plus 11 one will give me 971 so I can conclude that 746 plus 225 will give me 971. This is the partitioning method. Okay. All right. Let's see what we can do with this using the place value system. And that is the one we are used to, the one we are familiar with. So 746. Okay, I have 746. And then I'm going to add it to 225. So I write them in the most appropriate manner. Tens are written in line. Digits which are in tens are written in line. Those which are in units are written in line. Those which are in hundreds are also written in line. All right. 
so that we do the addition appropriately. So then I can do the addition of 6 plus a 5 gives me 11. And so this is where I write because it's in base 10. Ideally, our number system is in base 10. Okay, so it means that out of the 11, I'll have a remainder of 1. And I carry the 1 with a value of 10 actually to the next place. Okay, so this is where our vocabulary came in. Carry, remainder. Okay, so the next one I have 4 plus 2. That should give me a 6. But because I've carried a 1, that should be added to make it a 7. But ideally, it is in the tenths position, so that 7 actually re represents 7 tenths, which is 70. Okay, so I have 7 here, and then I have 7 plus 2, that gives me a 9. Okay, so same answer as I got when I used the partitioning method, the same answer I'm getting for the place value system. Okay, so I've done it for partitioning method, I've also done it for the place value method, I need you to try the second question for me using the partitioning method. And I'm going to be giving you 30 seconds to try this for me. Okay, so use the partition method to add 2,862 to 3,963 in 30 seconds. So take your jota, your, your pen. And let's begin. Ten seconds more. Last five seconds. It should be done by now. Okay. So that's our 10 seconds gone already. Let me see the answer you got. Can you mention it loudly for whoever is sitting close to you? Mommy, daddy, friend, colleague. So that we check our answers with what we suggested here for you. Okay. So what is our expected answer? We're expecting to get 6,825. 6,825. I want to believe that you had that. Well, there's another opportunity if you did not. But if you did, let's keep working harder and harder until we reach the skies. Okay. So then we had the second one. And we want to be using the place value system. The same question. Now I want to use the place value system. Okay. What you are already familiar with. Okay. So let's start with that one also in 30 seconds. Into the last 10 seconds. Okay, that should be that. And let's check our response. Of course, we expect that the response should be the same as the first method we used, since the numbers were the same, okay? They're supposed to be the same. But I wanted you to appreciate the methods, the various methods of doing these additions, okay? That's great. So having done that, let's see whether we can... Add now decimal numbers. We just finished with adding whole numbers. Let's do that for decimal numbers. So I have two questions to use for this. Okay. And so this one also, I'm going to be handling the first one with you together using the partitioning method and also the place value system method. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to leave the second one for you to also try. Okay. We do these things together. All right. So let's see how we can go through this addition of decimal numbers using the partitioning method. Partitioning. I'm going to divide a number, okay, into each tens, the value of tens, the value of ones, the value of hundreds, the value of thousands. That is if the question has it that way. 
okay, the value of tens of thousands, the value of hundreds of thousands, depending on the stretch and scope of the numbers in the question. Okay, so for this one, I have 698.93, and I'm supposed to add it to 45.68. Okay, so let me partition them. So for my 698.93, I'll partition it into the hundreds. How many hundreds are there in the number? 600. Okay, so that should give me 600. How many tens? Nine tens. Okay, that should give me a 90. And how many ones? Eight. And that should give me an eight. Okay, but there is a decimal aspect, so 0.93. Okay, 0.93. So let me just write that one the way it is. Okay, irrespective of its tenth value and its hundredth value. Okay, then I have a 45.68. I'm going to be partitioning that one also into its various components. So since I have 45, it means I don't have a hundred. So it means that in the hundredth column, it's supposed to be a zero, zero hundreds, or by value, no hundred. So I can move to the tens and I see, I see four tens. That should give me a 40. And how many ones? Five. So that should give me a five. And a decimal of six, eight. Okay. So as you can see, I don't have any number written under the 600 because in 45.68, it has no 100 to partition for. Okay. Okay. So I can do my simple addition over here. All right. So for my 3 and 8, that should give me 11. So I put them a 1 and I carry the 1 to the next place. So 9 plus 6 should give me a 15, plus that one should give me a 16. Okay, so a 16. Let me write all the 16 for now. All right, for now. When I'm done, I have to bring it back into its real number system because it cannot be that way. I'll bring it to where it has to be when I finish with the answers. Okay, then I have here the ones I see that there are eight ones and five ones that should give me a 13 ones okay and then i have 90 plus 40 that should give me a 130 and i have a 600 standing alone without any other number or assuming a zero so 600 plus zero should also give me a 600 so now, if I have 600 plus 130, that should give me 730, right? So if I have 730, and I'm supposed to add it to 13, that should give me 743, right? Then 743, I have to add it to 161 by way of decimals, okay? But you know that one of them has to move to the other side, okay? And become a 14 so literally this is supposed to become a 600 plus a 130 plus a 40 okay because a hundred of the decimals number can relate to a value of one okay let me take that again a hundredth of a decimal number can relate or is equivalent to a value of one Okay, so that means that 161, that one, as we were doing place value system, that one would have been carried to the other side. I want to believe you are following the discussion. Okay, it has to be carried to the other side. And so, by virtue of that, we can make the 13 become a 14. Okay, so that in this place, we are left with a 6 1. Okay, so 600 plus. 130 plus 14.61. So like I was saying, 600 plus 130 should give 730. 730 plus 14 should give 744. Okay. 
So a 744.61 should be what we are expected to get. Okay. Or if you like, we can demonstrate that here. 600, 130, and then a 14. Okay. Here gives us a 4. Okay. Okay. So... You will have to give me one moment to go through this again. Okay, so we want to look at how the, partition, the partitioning method will be used to solve this one. And so I have 698.93. I'm going to partition this number, okay, like I did in the first instance, into its hundreds, in its tens, and then the units, okay. So that should be giving me a 600 for the start, and then I have a 90, and then I have an 8.93. So let me indicate the decimal 93 there fully, like I did in the first instance, okay, and then. I have the second number, 45.68, okay? So I'm partitioning that one also, but remember 45.68 doesn't have a hundred. And so I'll start from the tens, and it has four tens. That should give me a 40, and it has five ones, okay? 0.68, all right? So with this, I can now do my addition in the way I have partitioned them, okay? So I have here 11, remember I am adding, okay? 11, and then 9 plus 6 gives a 15, plus the 1 should give a 16, okay? So I'm going to be writing all the 16 there for now, okay? For now, we'll put down all the 16 there, when we are getting to the tail end of the question, we'll have to send what has to be sent to its rightful place, okay? But for the purposes of partitioning, let's leave it there that way. And then, 8 plus a 5 will also give a 13, okay? Then, 90 plus 40 will also give us a 130, and then the 600 will also give us a 600, all right? And so I go through all these to add together, and I'm expected to get a 744.61, okay? That's it. So I've done it for the partitioning method. Let's see whether we can get it done for the place value method, okay? And that one we are already familiar with, so... We'll write our numbers in the appropriate order, okay, depending on the position, depending on the place value of the digits, okay. So here it gives us an 11, that should give us 1, okay. So that gives us a 1. We carry the 1 to the other side, that gives us a 15 plus 1, giving us a 6, okay, and then 8 plus 5 should actually give a 13 plus the 1 gives a 14. Carry 1 to the other side, okay? And then 9 plus 4 will give a 13 plus that 1 should also become a 14. And then that 1 with a 6 becomes a 7. Same answer as we got in the partitioning method, okay? So it's expected to be this way. Let's see whether you can attempt the next question using the partitioning method to add this in 30 seconds, okay? So, let's start the countdown now. Take your time and get it right. You can do it. We are in the last 10 seconds. Partition them first and add them.
Okay. Let's see the answer we're expecting from you. Did you get 1,142.017? Then you are correct if you did. If you did not, go through again. I'm sure there's somewhere you made an error. Correct your error and come back again with your correct answer. Okay. So again, let's try the same with the place value method. Okay. The same question with the place value method. Okay. So let's begin a countdown now in 30 seconds again. This is the one you are familiar with, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it. We expected to get the same answer anyway, but we just wanted to explore the various methods of going through that. Okay, so same answer as we got in the first method. We are expecting to get the same answer here, but I want to believe that you are following the various methods. Okay, so that's it for addition. Now, let's see if we can do for subtraction. Okay, let's subtract numbers. And then also for decimal numbers and see how we are going to be using the partitioning method and then also the place value method for subtraction. And so we are also going to take these two questions. I'm going to go through the first one with you together and then I will leave you to handle the second one on your own. Okay, so we are starting with whole numbers. Having done with whole numbers, we will deal with the decimal numbers. Okay, so again, we want to start with a partitioning method, we want to subtract 49,372 from 63,541. Okay. So, 63,541, I am going to partition it. Okay. So, I have tens of thousand. Okay. That should give me 60,000. Okay. And I have thousands, okay? Which number is in the thousands column? It's three, okay? So that should give me 3,000. Then I have hundreds. How many? 500. Then I have 40. Then I have a one, okay? Let's have partition them into their various, you know, column numbers and place value numbers, okay? Then I also have 49. 1,372. I'm going to partition that one also. So that gives me a 40,000 plus a 9,000 plus a 300 plus a 70 plus a 2. Okay, plus a 2. So I've divided or partitioned these numbers into their various column values, okay, or place values. But this time, remember, I am doing a subtraction, okay? So what it means is that I'm going to be subtracting one from the other, all right? So let me start from my tens of thousand. So I'm going to take 40,000 from 60,000, okay? And when I do, ideally, that should give me a 20,000, okay? It's a subtraction, okay? And then I'll add, not to mean that I'm doing addition, but because I've partitioned them, I'm subtracting them in the order in which I partitioned them so that I put the pieces together in my answer, my final answer, okay? That means that I have done the partitioning already, so then whatever various units or elements I got after the subtraction, I'll put them together to get my answer. So this doesn't mean I'm doing addition, okay? After all, I have subtracted 40,000 from 60,000 to give 20,000, okay? All right. Then I have to subtract 9,000 from 3,000, okay? And we know that that is not a possibility, okay? So for our course, when we do that, by integers, we are expecting to get a negative 6,000. A negative 6,000, okay? 
and then I subtract 300 from 500, I should get a 200. All right? And then I subtract a 70 from a 40, I should get a negative 30. Okay? And then I subtract 2 from 1, I should get a negative 1. Okay? So, ideally, what I'm getting is a 20,000, okay, minus 6,000 plus 200 minus 30 minus 1, okay? So, you can see that those that resulted into negative, it is now coming to do the subtraction on its own, okay? So, I subtract 1 from 30 and then... Also from 200, then I add it to a negative 6,000, and I subtract it from 20,000, okay? Or if you like, you can do it this way. 20,000 minus 6,000 should actually give a 14,000, okay? So a 14,000 plus 200 will give us a 14,200, isn't it? A 14,200, then I take out 30, okay? So that should be giving me... A 14,170. And I have one more to take out of the 70 to give me a 69. Okay, so that should give me a 14,169. That should give me my answer using partitioning. Okay, so having done this, I can also use the place value system to go through this thing. Okay, so then I can have six. Three, five, four, one, and I'm going to take out four, nine, three, seven, two. Okay, that is the one we are familiar with. Okay, so that we do one minus two, it's not possible. So, what do we do? We go to the next place, next position, and borrow a 10. That's in the tens column, right? A borrow a 10 and bring it there so that it becomes 11. So that the 11 minus a 2 gives us a 9. Okay. Borrowing 1 from here leaves here with a 3. Okay. 3 minus 7, 2 is not possible. So we need to go and borrow again. We borrow the 1 from the 5. Bring it here. It becomes a 13. A 13 minus a 7 should give us 6. Okay. Meaning we are left with just 4 here. Minus 3 gives us a 1. Okay. 3 minus 9, we come to borrow from the 6 to give to this 3 to give it a 13. Okay, minus 9 gives us a 4. Okay, then we are left with a 5 here. Minus 4 gives us a 1. Okay. That is it. 10 of yours to also start something or practice something. So I'm going to give you this question. And then in 30 seconds again... Use the partitioning method and handle this one for us so that we see. Okay, so your time begins now. Okay, keep working hard. Okay, that is your 30 seconds already gone down. But I want to believe you had your answer shared with your mommy, your daddy, your friend, your sibling, wherever you are and whoever is sitting with you, mention out your answer quickly and let's see whether that will be the same as we got here. And so here in our studios, we're expecting to get a 5,276. I believe you got it. Congratulations then. If you did not get it, take your time, go through it again and again. You will identify where the error came from. You will correct yourself, bounce back, and move on. Okay? That's how we do it for mathematics. So great. Congratulations. Let's see whether we can have another one. Now we want to use a place value system. Okay? Of course, we know we'll get the same answer because the question is the same. However, 
I want you to explore the various methodologies so that you become conversant with all of them. Okay, so let's start with this one now using the place value system. 30 seconds again. Last five seconds remaining. And hooray, that is it for us. Of course, I want to believe that you have gone through it. We know the answer will be the same as we did for the partitioning method. Okay, but I want to believe that you went through the process. Okay, so that you become familiar with it. So that is it for whole numbers. Let's also attempt it for decimal numbers. Okay, so I have two of those numbers. Quickly, I want to go through the first one for you, and then you will do the second one all by yourself. So 274.48. Okay, let me partition them quickly so that I know that I have a 200 that I will add to a 70 to a 4 okay, point 0.48 okay something like this and then 173.35 will also be partitioned into a hundred plus a 70 okay plus a 3.35 okay and I'm doing a subtraction okay I'm subtracting. So I would uh, subtract this from this quickly, and I'll be left with a hundred here, and there will be a zero here. Remember, I'm doing a subtraction, and there will be a one here. And when I subtract this, I will get a one, and here I will get a three. Okay, I'll put all these together. A hundred plus a zero plus one will give me a hundred and one. Okay, so that gives me a hundred and one point one three. I want to believe that you have gotten this. All right, I want to know that I really see what we are doing, and so please take a snapshot of the second one and then you attempt it for us to see whether or not you have understood it. I'm just going to leave you with this question, okay? Because we are bringing the section to a close now. So take a snapshot of this question and do this subtraction for me. You can use the partitioning method. You can use the place value method. Any of them is applicable. But attempt it for me and then share your response with me on Joy Learning TV, on Facebook, on YouTube. And then we shall get back to you and know how you fared so that next time when we come your way again another mathematics we'll look at the multiplication and then the division we've been able to do the addition and subtraction for today we'll look at multiplication and division the next time we come your way again with another time of mathematics for basic seven remember it is joy learning and we keep learning. i'll see you again my name is samuel Kwabi. bye bye Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.